Bengaluru-based Axis Gates Technologies, has partnered with Francis Silas SA to introduce the Helma P High Energy Laser Weapon to India, marking a major leap in counter drone warfare. The multi kilowatt directed energy system can disable or destroy drones using precision laser strikes, immune to jamming and requiring no ammunition. As India faces rising UAS threats from Pakistan and China, this Indo French collaboration could anchor future Atmanurbar laser defense deployments across the Army, Navy, and Air Force. The Indian Navy is exploring the short takeoff and landing variant of General Atomics MQ 9B Predator drones to operate from carriers like INS Vikrant and INS Vikramaditya, dramatically expanding over the horizon surveillance. With folding wings and enhanced thrust, the MQ 9B STOL could revolutionize carrier based ISR missions. Building on the success of Least Sea Guardians, India plans to induct 12 more drones by 2027 integrating them into a broader maritime domain awareness network. As the U.S. Air Force's Endural YFQ-44A Fury readies for flight trials, India's Halcats Warrior could soon mirror its success, with the indigenous HTFE-25 turbofan, delivering 25 kN of thrust for superior range, payload, and stealth. The Bengaluru-developed engine now in advanced testing, aims to make Warrior a true loyal wingman UCAV, rivaling China's GJ-11, and aligning with Atmanurba Bharat goals for 2030s-era collaborative combat aircraft. Pakistan has issued a Navaria warning for live-fire naval drills in the Northern Arabian Sea from November 2 to 5, overlapping with India's major tri-service exercise Trishul, underway across Rajasthan, Gujarat, and adjoining seas. The drills follow May's Operation Sindor clashes and Defense Minister Rajnath Singh's warnings over Sir Creek. Experts told news media that coordination between both sides will likely prevent incidents despite the sensitive timing and overlapping maritime zones. India's Electromagnetic Railgun Program led by DRDO, is poised to receive Ministry of Defense funding to move from scale trials to full prototype development. With successful tests at ARDE Pune and backing from the Indian Navy, the weapon promises Mach 7 to 8 projectile speeds for long-range precision strikes. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh recently reviewed the system, signaling strong political support for indigenous high-energy weapons under the Make in India and Atmanurba Bharat push. After Operation Sindor, DRDO and the IAF are fast-tracking an 800 km BrahMos ER and a slim 2.3-ton air-launched variant. June Chandipur tests reportedly validated ramjet upgrades and drag-cutting composites. The Mach 3 sea-skimming weapon proved hard to stop by Spada 2000 HQ-9. Naval and aircraft fixes, radar-absorbent edges, conformal fuel tanks and AI terminal maneuvers will let Su-30s, Rafaelis and Tejas carry deep strike, standoff deterrence. India's Tejas MK-1A fighter edges passed the Rafaelian radar sophistication, with its indigenous Utame ESA, boasting 912 transmit-per-receive modules, outnumbering Rafaelis 838. The compact design allows superior beam agility and power density, even within a smaller airframe. DRDO engineers credit this to smart spatial optimization and a focused mission philosophy, while house fixed refueling probe design further exemplifies Tejas efficiency first engineering for agile, high endurance operations in contested skies. In a major leap for India's indigenous jet engine efforts, DRDO is developing a nickel-based powder metallurgy turbine disc, similar to the one used in France's Rafale M88 engine. Strengthened by Gamma Prime superalloys, the disc can endure 700 degrees Celsius and will feature in the Kaveri dry engine for Tejas MK2 and future UAVs by 2030. Developed by GTRE and Midhani, 
The disc will require a new 20,000-ton isothermal forging press at House Koraput plant, expected by 2027. This breakthrough aims to cut foreign dependence in high-temperature engine components, advancing India's self-reliant aero engine ecosystem. The Indian Air Force faces growing pressure to finalize a new Dasa Rafale deal before the Tejas MK2 and AMCA prototypes fly, which could weaken the case for foreign imports. With squadron strength down to 31 against 42 required, the IAF seeks 114 Rafales worth over Rs 2 lakh crore, under a Make in India plan, bypassing the slow MRFA tender. However, the Defense Ministry demands deeper technology transfer, clashing with Dassault's limited offer. Meanwhile, Russia is wooing India with a Su-57E proposal, offering 70-80% to TOT. The IAF sees 2027-2029 to as crucial, as indigenous fighters near readiness, reshaping future procurement priorities. India is seeking to revive the long-delayed Rs 21,000 crore CAM of KA-226 T light utility helicopter deal, as Defense Production Secretary Sanjeev Kumar and HAL Chairman Dr. D.K. Sunil visited Russia's Yusuklimov plant on October 30th. The visit focused on the VK 650V turboshaft engine, proposed as a replacement for France's Safran Arano 1A, whose export restrictions have stalled progress since 2022. Klimov has offered full technology transfer and joint production, but retrials and new certifications could delay the program by 12 to 18 months. Meanwhile, the Indian Army's fresh tender for 156 light utility helicopters, including House Indigenous LUH, signals a shift toward homegrown solutions. That's all for today. Hope you liked this video. Please like, share and subscribe for daily news updates. Thanks for watching.